Pháp dương vô thượng tôn Tam giới vô luân thấp Thiên nhân chi đạo sư tử sanh chi tự phù Ở nhất niềm quy năng diệt tam kỳ nghiệp Sướng dương nhược tán tháng ức thiết mạc năng thần Nam Mô Bồ Sư Thích Ca Môn Phật Continuing onward from the first lecture The Buddha Asubuti Can you see the body form of the Tathagata? Here, the Buddha was testing the wisdom of Subhuti. When you study the Sutra, you all should know that there are forms and reasoning. If you talk about the Buddha's form, he was appearing in front of Subhuti in his reincarnated body, which was composed of the four elements, earth, water, fire, and wind. This is a question that is often used to measure the prajna wisdom of a practitioner. When you practice and apply your prajna wisdom, you are supposed to see that the true form is constant and everlasting. But if you see the opposite, where the true form changes, then you have not comprehend the true mind. So Sobhuti replied to the Buddha, Go on a one. Cannot say that seeing thy body is seeing the Tathagata. Why? Because thou often said that seeing thy body is not truly seeing the Tathagata body. From the previous lecture, you all have heard that Subhuti specialized in the empty mind practice. So when the Buddha asked him about the Tathagata forms, he immediately understood the eternal character of the Tathagata. The physical body of the Buddha was formed by the four elements, so it had to be influenced by time and space. Subhuti was referring to the Buddha's Dharma body when he replied. The Buddha then replied to Subhuti, Subhuti, whatever has formed are all unreal. If you can recognize that they are not real, then you have seen the Tathagata. From this reply, then we should know that every physical form, including all beings, are transient and change through time. They are not constant and eternal. Almost every being looked outward and rely on his six faculties eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. Combining with the six world, sight, hearing, smell, taste, touch, and thoughts. To create the six consciousness, the resulting dharmas from these interactions should be recognized by us as transitory, like the fireflies appearing from emptiness. Then our minds should stop and not be attached to these delusions and instead settle in bliss. Those of you who understand what I am saying here should realize that this is one method to practice. And it is also a way to be at one with the Dharma body of the Tathagata. Now we continue on with the Sutra text. Subhuti asked, Go on the one. If beings have a chance to hear these teachings, will they inspire to truly believe? The Buddha replied, Subhuti, do not express such doubt. 500 years after the Tathagata has passed, there will be practitioners full of merits who will inspire to believe after hearing these teachings. You should realize that these men's merit will not develop under one two, three, four, or five Buddhas, but under countless Buddhas of the past. Ayidafa. After reading this passage, then those of you here should realize that you all have great karmic connection with the Buddhas of the past already, in order to have a chance to hear these teachings. 
there are already over 7 billion people on earth and yet how many know of the Buddha? How many understand the Sutra? And how many practice to see that Buddha's mind? Therefore, for you to hear this teaching, you must realize that your merits came from incalculable lifetimes ago to create the karmic connections of today. If you have not planted these karmic seeds in the past, then today you would probably be deluded by the five senses and would never come to a Buddhist temple or attend a Mahayana lecture like this one. Because Subhuti realized what the Buddha was saying was not easy to comprehend, he was worried if future beings heard of the Sutra, would they believe and accept? However, the Buddha assured him that not only now but in the future of 500 years after he has passed, there will be practitioners who hear and accept it. These practitioners are not normal but have karmic seeds due to their immeasurable past offerings and good deeds. They will have the chance to attain the fruit of Buddhahood if they practice and persevere in accordance with this sutra teaching. You will reap what you sow. If you plant a wheat seed, then the wheat plant will grow. So today, you hear this Diamond Sutra and that inspire to put forth a body mind and practice. You will surely attain the Buddha fruit in the future. I will tell you this, some of you in this room wore with the Buddha in the past, wore the monk's robes and follow his teachings. But today after going through the process and reincarnated back to this world, you have forgotten everything. You can recover those memories if you practice, enter the pure mind, go back in time and you will rediscover who you were. This Diamond Sutra has been confirmed by the 33rd Zen Patriarch Hoi Nang that it can change our deluded mind back to our original pure mind. He had encouraged all of his students to study and often recite the Diamond Sutra so that in this lifetime they could see their pure mind and start the process of transforming themselves from being a commoner to a saint. Now back to the Sutra text. Subhuti, the Tathagata knows clearly that if any being heard of the Sutra and immediately inspired to have pure faith and constantly practice, then he has immeasurable blessings. Why is that? It is because he does not have biases in the form of ego, human, all beings, lifespan, correct and incorrect Dharma. Namo Bhutsu Thikka Munifat In this section, the Buddha said that any being who practice in accordance to the Sutra, he will attain immeasurable merits. Why is it so? It is because if all the good deeds that you do are through the consideration of physical or mental form, then that can only bring you limited benefit of being reborn in a better world or in an environment that is easy or wealthy. However, he does not approve of this. He wants you to have blessing based on your practices in accordance with this sutra so that you can clear your mind, be in a state of bliss and reside in your pure mind. Just being inspired to have the thought of reciting this sutra would be enough for you to acquire immeasurable blessings. Do you remember our 33rd Patriarch, Huệ Nang, who heard his teacher read to him a line from the Diamond Sutra? Ưng vô sở chủ nhị san kỳ tâm Which means, don't let your mind be attached to any form. 
Right at that moment, he had a great awakening. This occurrence by Hue Nang demonstrates how the Diamond Sutra can bring you back to your pure mind and how immeasurable blessing will achieve through the awakening. The Buddha said, Why is that? It is because he does not have biases in the form of ego, human, all beings, lifespan, correct and incorrect dharma. This line again emphasizes the importance of no attachment. If you can do this, although your body is still here on earth, but your mind has been liberated, then you are not a commoner anymore, but you are transforming to become a saint already. An earthly body person, but with the mind of a saint that is beyond this world. Therefore, this sutra can help a householder or monk who recites it to see his true mind, which does not see the four forms. Furthermore, the Buddha mentioned two other forms that we should avoid, which are correct and incorrect dharmas. This means that whatever forms rose up in your mind, if you let them faster, then you have deviated from your true mind. The goal of a practitioner is to return to his true mind, which is always in bliss and does not give birth to any form at all. If you practice but see a Dharma to follow, or give birth to a thought, then it means that you are practicing and have not reached a true liberation. Namo Ajidafa. Now back to the Sutra. The Buddha said, If you have biases on the Dharma, then that is having biases on the ego, human, all being, and lifespan. If you have biases on false Dharma, then that is also having biases on the ego, human, all being, and lifespan. This is why you should not have biases on true or false dharmas. This is why the Tathagata often said, Listen monks, you all should know that all the dharmas that I have taught are like a boat that should be left behind once it reaches the shore. Instead of carrying it around on your back while traveling on land, this should be applicable to false dharma as well. Ayidafa. In this section, the Buddha taught that all monks, that once they have understood, used, and awakened to the dharma, they should not continue to carry it with them. These dharmas include the correct, incorrect, with form and no form dharmas. Without biases on these four, what is left for you to carry with you or talk about? They all give birth to incorrect views. This is why once you have reached the point of endless bliss in your mind, then there are no words left to say. This is similar to what was said in Tao Te Ching. The Tao can be described as not the eternal Tao. This is very deep. When you first begin to practice, you are still holding on to the Dharma to stay afloat. As you get better, you slowly leave it behind. Once you get to the other shore where liberation exists, you must leave the boat that carries you over behind. There is no further need to carry the heavy boat while you are traveling on land. Freedom must be felt in all situations. Once you have entered Nirvana, there is nothing left to be attached. If you are on the pulpit and debating on the Dharma, then you are still stuck because your thought is on win or lose, which means you saw the ego entity and the other human form who you are debating against. The purpose of studying the Sutra is not to compete or debate against each other or attain something 
but it is to explore, understand, and rise above all dharmas. The Buddha confirmed that the Tathagata Dharma is like a boat to ferry passengers who want to return to the shore of freedom and liberation. The passenger must study, analyze, and meditate on this Dharma. Once he mastered it and saw his pure mind, he would no longer need to carry it with him. Today, I am sitting here to discourse on Dharma because you all still have the six senses to hear, have the need to understand, and have not been able to eliminate the four forms. Had you been able to eliminate the four forms, then I would not need to lecture anymore, but just look at you and smile and you smile back. That would be enough. Namo Bồ Sư Thích Ca Mô Ni Phật Now back to the Sutra. Subhuti, what do you think? Did the Tathagata attain supreme enlightenment? Did the Tathagata lecture on the Dharma? Subhuti replied, Well, on the one, the Tathagata did not attain the supreme enlightenment and did not lecture on the Dharma. Why is that? It is because supreme enlightenment cannot be formulated and therefore cannot be discussed. It is neither true nor false Dharma. Namo Bồn Sư Thích Ca Mô Ni Phật Did you hear that section? It represents the prajna wisdom of the highest form. The Buddha used the Tathagata wisdom to help the holy monks and commoners to eliminate their ego entity. If you have Dharma biases, then you are still attached to the form and false views of the world. The Buddha asked if the Tathagata had become a Buddha or lectures on the Dharmas. These are very interesting questions. If you don't understand, then you will say, yes, he did become a Buddha and he did lecture on the Dharmas. This response would be correct because you are focused on the form of the Tathagata. But since the Buddha was talking about the mind of the Tathagata, Subhuti answer were correct. You have to understand what the word Tathagata means. It means neither comes or goes. It doesn't change. We are talking about a Buddhist character that is neither true nor false, neither created nor destroyed, and that does not have a subjective point of view in action and in identity. So if you say that the Tathagata lecture, then how can it be done when his Dharma body was completely quiet, unchanged, and motionless? The Dharma lecture here was caused by conditional causation and attachment made by beings, which resulted in the Buddha discoursing the Dharma. In reality, the Tathagata does not have this Dharma message with him. This lecture was done to help fellow beings through spoken words, which caused him to present the wisdom of the pure mind. Else, with the roots of the pure mind, there is nothing to discuss or present. If any of you here understand this, then you are already an advanced practitioner. If not, that is okay. Just lean on to the Dharma form for now and continue your practice, and eventually you will realize the spirit of the Dharma. Ayidafa. Now we go back to the Sutra text. Subhuti asked, If the Buddha Dharma have no differences, then why are there different level of practitioners? The Buddha replied, it is because the abilities of all beings are different, which cause different level of understanding. The Buddha Dharma is unchanged and uncaused, so there are no different level. Ayidafa. 
This sentence is also very good. There are practitioners whose mind still discriminate, so they would ask if the Buddha Dharma has different level or not. If there are no different level, then why are there our hearts or bodhisattvas with different level of title in their names? For example, in the Theravada path, there are four levels of achievement in order to become an Arha. In the Mahayana path, there are 12 levels of Bodhisattvas. All these different levels are needed for discussion between beings because they are needed to discriminate, whereas in the Tathagata's mind, there is only bliss. In the Lotus Sutra, the Buddha talked about three different vehicles that were used to rescue different number of beings. These vehicles fit are dependent on the capability of each being in understanding the dharmas. Therefore, the different level of the dharmas exist due to the abilities of each being. By itself, the Buddhist dharma have no distinction. It is like a vast space of emptiness. If you take a portion of it and put it in a bottle and cap it, then that emptiness has fit itself within that bottle. So has that partition portion of emptiness lost its original character and is now different from its source? No. Similarly, the Buddhist Dharma changes all the time but would not lose their original character. It is through the mind of each being that the different level exists. In reality, the Buddhist Dharma has only one level, and it is in accordance with the pure mind. You also try your best to understand the deep meaning of the Sutra, so you go beyond the Dharma form and realize the true Dharma character. If not, you will be stuck on the Dharma forms which are subjected to birth and death, and you will not be able to see the no birth, no death quality of the Dharmas. It is like you cook the sand and expect it to become rice. Ajidafa. Now we continue on with the Sutra text. Subhuti, what do you think? If someone took the seven types of treasure that filled the great Kiliocosm and donated them all away, would his blessing be great? Subhuti replied, War honored one, it is great indeed. The Buddha then asked, Subhuti, if someone read and remembered four lines of this teaching and taught and explained it to others, his blessing would be even greater. Why? Because all Buddhas and the supreme enlightenment teachings of all the Buddhas came from this discourse. Subhuti, furthermore, what is called Buddha Dharma is not really Buddha Dharma, but it is temporarily called Buddha Dharma. Namo Bhutsu Thikramoni Phat. If you listen to the question posed by the Buddha and do not have a high level understanding of Buddhist teaching, then for sure you won't understand it. The answer that Subhuti gave about the great blessing that would bestow on someone who donated the seven types of treasure which the great Chilio Cosm contained was right, not wrong. But the Buddha taught that learning, understanding, and teaching at least four lines of this sutra's discourse was even greater in blessing than someone who has donated an immeasurable amount of treasures. Why? This is not unreasonable, because if you taught the Buddhist Dharma to other beings, and they listen, practice, and attain the fruit of Buddhahood, of true liberation, then this blessing is immeasurable that nothing can surpass. In addition, 
The Buddha confirmed that all Buddhas and Buddha Dharmas were derived from this teaching. Then this Diamond Sutra is the mother of all Buddhas of Ten Direction. If the Buddhas of Ten Direction do not understand and follow this Sutra, then they would still discriminate on the four forms which are ego entity, other human, all being, and lifespan limits. How can they become Tathagatas if that was the case? Therefore, if someone study, understand, implements the Diamond Sutra teaching, and then spread the message and help others to attain great tranquility, then this is a blessing that is immeasurable, everlasting, and cannot be compared. The Buddha continued by saying, What is called Buddha Dharma is not really Buddha Dharma, but is temporarily called Buddha Dharma. Ayyidha This sentence has a very deep meaning. Did you hear that? This is like saying to all the people here, You all are commoners, but not really commoners. Why is that? It is because if you are a commoner now and continue to stay a commoner then, then you could not realize the character of the Tathagata. You are temporarily called a commoner because there is a potential of improvement into a higher form. Similar to those of you who follow the Bodhisattva path, you have the forms of a commoner, but in your mind, you follow the principle of a great man. So you are not really a commoner. Buddha Dharma is also a temporary name that is used to help all beings. But in reality, it does not exist. If you reach a state of clear realization, then you will see Buddha Dharma as just a temporary name to help being at the lower level. Once the Buddhas enter Nirvana, then the Buddha just look at each other and smile. There would be no sutra to discuss. Therefore, if you debate and compete to see if who is better, then you are still stuck in the discrimination of dharmas and see the forms of all being. Now we continue on with the sutra text. Subhuti, what do you think? Can a practitioner of stream enterer declare that he has obtained the fruit of stream enterer? Well, on the one, he cannot. Why? Stream enterer must not see himself attaining the fruit of a stream enterer. Then he is a stream enterer. Subhuti, what do you think? Can a practitioner of one's returner declare that he has obtained the fruit of a once returner? Or on the one, he cannot. Why? Once returner must not see himself attaining the fruit of a once returner. Then he is a once returner. Subhuti, what do you think? Can a practitioner of non-returner declare that he has obtained the fruit of non-returner? Well, on the one, he cannot. Why? Non-returner must not see himself attaining the fruit of a non-returner. Then he is a non-returner. Suputi, what do you think? Can a practitioner of Arahant declare that he has obtained the fruit of a Arahant? Well, on the one, he cannot. Why? Arahant must not see himself attaining the fruit of Arahant. Then he is Arahant. If he saw himself attaining the fruit of Arahant, then he is still stuck and saw the four forms, which are ego entity, human, all beings, and lifespan limits. Go on the one. Just like me, because I did not see myself obtaining the fruit of Arahant, which is why the Tathagata had confirmed that I have excelled among the best in the perfect quiescence. 
in seclusion dwelling and in freedom from passion. War on that one, had I said, I have attained the fruit of Arahant, thou would not declare and praise as such. Nam mô Bồ Sư Thích Ca Mô Ni Phật In this section, the Buddha want to use Buddha wisdom to eliminate the attachment to the four fruits of the small vehicles, which are stream enterer, once returner, non-returner, and arahant. When you use a word to declare this person has attained this fruit or that, then you have discriminated against the high or low level of a practitioner. For the stream enterer, if he declared himself to have attained the fruit of a stream enterer, then he still pay attention to sight, sound, odor, taste, touch, and dharma. He would be liable to suffer from false views. Today, I let you know that if any of you are not attached to the sight, sound, odor, taste, touch, and dharma, then you have attained the fruit of a stream enterer. Why? It is because most beings are influenced by these six consciousness, which inflame their passions. So if you can bypass them, then you can return to your pure mind, and no dharma would arise to make you think that you have attained the fruit of a stream enterer. With the same logic of returning to your pure silent mind, then no thought would arise to make you think that you are a once returner, non returner, or arahant. Likewise, if you are a Buddha, then you are a Buddha and don't need to say anything more. Your words, your action, your smile, and your compassion have already permeated into the emptiness. There is no need to introduce who you are because when you identify who you are, then you are stuck in that form which would initiate an ego entity and all the attachment that come with it. The Buddha can validate your achievement, but you cannot self-identify because it would lead you to false views. Zen Buddhism also follow these practices and require you to have the master to validate your achievement. The Diamond Sutra main directive is to help you eliminate your ego and dharma biases. If you cannot do this, then you are still a commoner. A commoner relies on form from sight, sound, odor, taste, touch, and dharma, while a holy man does not. Even Buddha dharmas can't even be called Buddha dharma. Then what do you use to validate your achievement? Do you all now see how deep and meaningful this sutra is? It is unfathomable, deep, because it is the mother of all Buddhas. Now back to the sutra text. Subhuti, what do you think? In the past, when I was with Dipankara Buddha, Phat Nhiên Đăng, did the Tathagata attain the fruit of the Buddha Dhammas? Well, on that one, when the Tathagata was with Dipakara Buddha, thou did not attain the fruit of the Buddha Dhamma. Ayidafat. In the long distant past, the Dipankara Buddha was the person who validated the Buddha's supreme enlightenment in our world. But now he asked Subhuti if he had indeed attained the supreme enlightenment. Why did he ask Subhuti this question? It is to see if Subhuti has used his prasna wisdom to eliminate the Dharma bias or not. A commoner's answer would be yes, the Buddha did attain the Buddha Dharma. But Subhuti's answer was very wise and answered no. 
the Buddha did not achieve the Buddha Dhamma. This is in accordance to the Sutra, message of achievement, but without thought of seeing yourself achieved. The Tathagata's mind is always silent, and no mental Dhamma would arise to say he has achieved or not. Like I said before, the Sutra main directive is to eliminate your ego and Dharma biases. If your mind initiates a thought of who is better or worse, or initiate a discussion, then you are stuck in the four forms. If you can eliminate your ego and Dharma biases, then you will see your smile is full of kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity. You will see all beings are deserving of love and kindness. Namo Ayidafa. Now we continue on with the Sutra text. Subhuti, what do you think? Does the Bodhisattva bring glory and honor to the Buddha land? Will on the one? No. Why is that? A Bodhisattva brings glory and honor to the Buddha land when he does not see himself bring glory and honor. It's truly bringing glory and honor to the Buddha land. Ayidafa. Again, this is a very interesting line. Normally, everyone would think that a Bodhisattva does bring glory and honor to the Buddha land. So why is this not so? Similar to giving offerings. If you recognize that you gave and saw the people who received the offerings, then you are still at a lower level. A Bodhisattva who is supposed to have a selfless and quiet mind and yet initiated a thought that he did this or that, then he does not understand and is still biased on forms and dharmas. He is still stuck and attached. Even if he could discourse the 12 volumes of Buddha Sutras and receiving standing ovation, he is still a commoner. Therefore, a Bodhisattva who brings glory and honor to the Buddha land is someone who has entered a state that does not give birth and death to Dharma and is completely silent. Then what is there left to say he has brought glory to the Buddha land or not? Today, you all have heard from the Diamond Sutra which the Buddha himself declared was the source of all Buddha Dhammas and was the source that gave birth to all Buddhas of the Ten Direction. Those of you here today will be future Bodhisattvas and Buddhas. Why? It is because you all have been in practice for many lifetimes and now have the karmic connection to hear and learn the teaching of the Sutras. If you truly understand, then not for long, you will be able to silence the biases derived from the four forms and glorify your own Buddha land. In reality, there is no glorification because you have entered a state of no attainment or a state of complete silence. Namo Motsu Tekka Monifat.